Coach Joe Drake with the Axiom Fitness Academy and in this video I want to take a concept that you're learning inside the NASM material which is torque and lever systems and I want to bring it to life and kind of expand it out for you guys a little bit. So first off, as you're going through these chapters, especially chapter 7, understand the human movement system, you come across these different lever systems and it has to do with how our body generates force. So the first thing that we need to understand is what torque is and torque is rotational force and it's how our body moves throughout the world. Now inside of those chapters you learn about first, second and third class levers and there are very few examples of those first and second class levers and we've talked about them in previous videos and so we're going to focus primarily on third class which is how most of our joints in the human body move and I want to give you guys a visual of how this works as well. So obviously I'm going to go bicep curls because everybody loves bicep curls and it's just very easy to show you guys as well but it's just understanding the fact that no matter the exercise, and here with our bicep curl, it's easier to kind of slow it down and talk about because we're really working on a single joint. So this is like the purest way for us to think about and look at a single joint, what's happening with torque. All right, torque equals force times resistance arm, or what's also known as the lever arm. And a lot of it has to do with understanding where in the exercise, in any given exercise that we're looking at, where are the potential axis or axi, if that's the plural way of saying it, of rotation. Now pretty easy to see here with our bicep curl as I'm doing kind of this modified creature curl setup, that it's gonna be here at my elbow joint. Now force times resistance arm, a lot of that has to do with how far away the resistance or the weight is from that axis of rotation. Now the great thing about third class levers as far as resistance training goes, is it actually doesn't take that much weight for me to overload this muscle. Third class levers are actually kind of mechanically inefficient, right? So you would think that's a bad thing. Not necessarily, because we're, you know, we're able to do a lot of fluid coordinated movements as humans, so it's still a great thing. But it's also one of the reasons that we can use dumbbells, cables, bands, resistance to overload the body pretty easily, right? Even I'm working with just this 12 and a half pound dumbbell. And what happens is in order to overcome this rotational force from the dumbbell, right? The dumbbell and gravity pulling me down, I have to generate significantly more force in this bicep, All right? So that's this concept of torque. And especially with third class levers, that's how most of it works in the human body. Now that's an easy example because we're thinking about a single joint. Why does this actually matter? Why does understanding torque help as a coach? Well, let me give you guys another exercise you're probably pretty familiar with and you can probably relate to, and that is lateral raises. So I'm not gonna get into coaching and cueing our lateral raises too much, but long lever, right? Especially if I'm focused on, I'll show just this single arm. I might have a slight bend in the elbow because for most people that keeps it out of the neck and traps, but I'm really moving here at just this shoulder joint. Now I have some movement in my scapula, but we're gonna keep this real simple here as well. And just think about this single joint, this axis of rotation. All right, now right now that dumbbell's pretty far away. If I'm, especially I'm out here, my arm is a pretty long lever, right? And you probably know it doesn't take a lot of weight with lateral raises compared to other exercises. And all of a sudden, when you bend your arms, you probably also know, we're like, wow, I can do quite a bit more weight here as well. Well, what we did is we shortened the lever arm. And that's actually really powerful because this is a good example of an exercise that a lot of people may struggle with, even from a neck and shoulder tightness issue. I can tell you from working with clients for the past 16 years, a lot of people struggle with tension and issues there in the neck and shoulders. And what I call long lever arm exercises, maybe like a little too much for them in that area, but boom, all of a sudden we just change the lever system a little bit, bring it in a little bit closer. And now they're like, okay, cool, Joe, now I feel it just in my deltoids like we want to. So understanding, especially within the third class lever systems, understanding how to change and play with torque a little bit can really be powerful at opening up exercise variations and just better ways of doing things with certain clients. And I'll give you guys another example, a very common one as well. When it comes to technique and understanding where is the axis of rotation, where do I want to be moving, and RDLs, probably one of the most, or just hinging in general, probably one of those most challenging moves for so many clients to really get and groove technique wise. And I want to see if you guys can recognize the difference between these two separate reps, all right? Rep number one, hips go back, and then rep number two. And hopefully you guys picked up on the difference in the position of those dumbbells, right? Very common for people to think as they're pushing back, they kind of push those dumbbells out in front. So when we're doing an RDL, 
we want, or I say want because it doesn't always happen, we want the axis of rotation to be here at the hips. All right, sometimes what happens when we let those dumbbells get out in front, all of a sudden we start feeling that low back. And really what you did, the further away those dumbbells are from the axis of rotation, guess what? The more torque, all right? Now in your mind, you might be thinking, oh, well that's better, right? It's like more weight. Not necessarily, because it may create torque in the wrong area of the body. And for a lot of people, the further out in front those weights get, even a little bit, right, off the body, low back, boom, pull them in tight so they're closer to that axis of rotation. And now all of a sudden we're feeling it in the right area of the body, the glutes and the hamstrings. So it has a lot to do with technique as well. And the last piece I wanna show you of why understanding lever systems and, and how we can use it is important is also the fact that it has a lot to do with range of motion. I'm gonna give you a core exercise because that's an easy one for us to visualize, but it's just knowing the further I am, right, the further I am away from the body, whatever the axis of rotation is, it can also be a way to progress or a method of progression. So with core, especially rotational exercise, it's pretty easy to again understand, all right, if I'm gonna do this band rotation and I keep my arms or a cable, whatever you got, and I keep it in pretty tight to my body, well, where's my axis of rotation, right? It's like I got a pull coming down through my head, for the most part, hips and spine, right? I'm trying to rotate that way. So the further away that band is, the longer the lever arm is, the more torque. So I can do that to make a lighter resistance harder, right? Or again, to modify. You might find that at a certain position, right? Out here, maybe there's too much neck and shoulder, but all of a sudden, I just bend the arms a little bit, gives me a little bit more leverage. And all of a sudden, now I'm able to train the muscles that I want to and get the right feedback from my clients. So just understand, this is one that has been powerful, powerful, powerful for me. And it's a simple physics concept, but takes you a long ways, especially in what we call biomechanics, which is just the physics of the body. And it all has to do with torque. So the takeaway from this video is that it's obviously important for you guys to learn and understand the difference between your first, second, and third class levers. But in my mind, the more valuable, the more important thing that you can gain beyond your certification is just an understanding of torque and lever systems and how to take advantage of them in the gym.